I have a message to Mr. Thief and Mrs. Thief. Keep on stealing. Steal as much as you can steal from Kenyans. I have a message to you, Mr. and Mrs. Corrupter. Keep on corrupting. Keep on your corruption. God says, enlarge your stomach. Steal more. God says, enlarge your belly. Take more from them. But God says, prepare for my day. Because my day is eternity. My anger on you shall be eternity. You cannot oppress my people for eternity. You will, appro- you will oppress them for a time. So when it comes to issues of finances, I will urge every Kenyan to get into prayer and intercede and pray. Because this country, we are operating under a spirit of financial slavery. Financial strains. Number one, I want to speak this to every Kenyan. There is a spirit of suffering into Kenyans and into Kenya, and this spirit is a financial spirit. I want you to know that names have power, and when we brought in this government that we have today, it baptized us by a name of a hustler. The children of Israel had a name of slaves. We Kenyan, we have been baptized a name of Hasola. So, I want you to see this. And I want you to see this prophetically. I don't know whether many Christians in this country have seen and discovered something in the spiritual realm. From the time from the time we got this country as our country during the times of independence we had a spirit called the Mau Mau fighters it was a spirit of fighting for independence it took over the entire country by blood it took over the entire country by blood and the blood of Mau Mau the people of Mau Mau who were killed and the people that they killed, the colonizers, that blood made a seal of a covenant. After the Mau Mau, we were baptized in the second spirit that ruled us for quite some time. And that it was the spirit of Harambe. As much as Harambe, in Hinduism, it's a god or it's a, an, a, a deity. But we are not Hindus. So the spirit which we named Harambe, in our own, we gave it the power of togetherness. Harambe, togetherness. So we moved from the spirit of war and we were now ruled, we were being ruled by the spirit of Harambe. We went on with the spirit of Harambe until we were baptized in another spirit in our zekana remember the days that people could sing the songs in our zekana bila moi it became the spirit of change but today we were baptized in the spirit of hustling so I am telling you as long as you are under the sun and the soil of Kenya financially you people will have to suffer and let us not deceive ourselves because prophecies are there not only from me as a prophet but even from other prophets of god when the prophets of god raised their voice and they said kenyans will suffer what did you ex- especially you people expected what was the expectation there is nothing better than that So, Kenyans, you need to know that we are in a state of suffering for a period of five years until when the nature will give us a second, another chance to decide whether we want to continue to suffer or we want to get out of suffering. And and we are not suffering because somebody has made it. I'm not saying this because Ruto is the president. No. And I'm not saying this because 
Ruth is the one making us to suffer. No. The Lord spoke the spirit that was behind Ruto. It was the spirit to make the people, the people to suffer. So, get this. People will suffer as long as you are not under the river of the spirit. You will suffer. So, I don't want to raise here a voice and say that I'm going to pray and this is going to stop. No, that is our fate for the next three years. That is the fate of Kenyans. The fate of suffering. And people will suffer financially. Financially. People will strain financially. Because the Lord spoke about it. And we didn't take an action of praying against it. Neither did the church stood to look at despite the politics. Bes despite when we put the politics aside, what kind of spirit do these people come up with? What is the spirit in this man A? What is the spirit in this man B? What is the spirit in this man C? The church didn't look into that. Because the church itself was compromised. So today, many Kenyans are feeding on the consequences from the consequences of the decisions they made. And that's why we have this financial crisis. People may deceive themselves, but the truth is that people are suffering. Life, it is hard. People get money, and how money disappears from their hands, how money disappears and they cannot control money. People are struggling to get money, and even when they get what happens to the, the money, they cannot explain. People who are good investors and good planners today, they don't know how to invest anymore. People are selling their properties and even what they have sold, where the money goes to, they can't tell. People have become desperate. People are just hustling. Because every name has power. And if name has no power, then God would have not changed the name of Abraham, the name of Sarah, the name of Saul, and many more people. God would have left them to remain with their names. Even to some individual, God himself gave names before they were born. Why? Because God knows that names have power. There were better other names that the politicians would have come up with. But you see, the problem that we have is that even our politicians, they don't consult from God when they come up with their projects. And even if they do, they consult God from wrong places where they, God is never found. They don't go to a man of God because he hears the voice of God. They go to a man of God because of the status that he has packaged himself and he looks a man of God. And so what happened? Two things happen. One, it's what the Bible says, when the wicked are in authority, what will happen? And two, what happened? Where there is no vision, the Bible says, where there is no vision, people do what? So we are operating on two principles according to the standard and the word of God. Kenya is operating on the principle of the wickedness, wicked people being in authority. What does the word of God say will happen to the individual or people or the citizen? And two, Kenya is operating on the principle of no vision, no godly vision. So what does the Bible say when there is no godly vision? People will do what? So we can't outmaster the word of God. We shall accept it as it is and go with it as it is. But that is the fate. So every Kenyan, you need to know that there is a total spiritual slavery, oppression of finances. Even those who are rich today, they are consuming and consuming and they are having a problem with how they are spending and they cannot save themselves. The other day someone came to me and told me, Prophet, I don't know what is happening with me. I think someone has bewitched me and I asked him, what is it? And he told me, Prophet, I am spending almost eight times what I used to spend and I don't see where my money is going. I have a problem with 
saving but i'm removing all the savings that i've ever saved and not only am i using my savings i'm even selling my properties and i don't know what is happening to me and i told him brother it's not what is happening to you it's the spirit that is ruling this country right now we are under spirit of oppression financial oppression and i am giving this message as a prophet to every believer get in prayer over your finances you yourself take a charge of prayer over your finances because there is a spirit moving on in this country whereby its mission is to oppress every believer it's going to oppress all believers and it's like at the end of the day the spirit wants us to be a subject of beggars I may not know who is this person that want all the Kenyans to beg him or her but that is exactly where we are heading to and before we turn to the next phase of election many rich people who are rich will be the greatest beggars and how about the, those who are beggars before the spirit took over today you can employ a Kenyan without negotiating salary because every Kenyan most of Kenyans they rather get the job than discuss the salary later because even getting that job is a problem today there are so many Kenyans who have worked and who are working who have not been paid for four months five months six months including being paid by the government itself Today we are living in a country whereby you take a case to police the pol the policeman will welcome you at the gate because it's not a case you're bringing for them to solve but a source of income if they are not going to get the money from you who has brought the case the accuser then they are going to make money from the accused Yesterday, there's a lady who came to me when I was in the field crusade and she told me prophet my father died and I started following the monies of my father by the time everything was done there was a man who was assisting us from a bank one of the banks actually it's equity bank in Kisi may the managers of the equity bank hear this by the time this man is a staff of equity bank in Kisi a manager he was helping these two little girls who are total orphans no father no mother they were left by their grandfather by the time this man who finished assisting them to follow up the, fa the funds of their father the account was zero the money had been withdrawn the same man told them i've assisted you people up to where i, have a, a, I could try there is no money in the account and that's how they were sent away this is the very man who was assisting them to withdraw money to get the monies of their father but by the time everything had been processed the account was empty and the man jumped them and sent them away they saw me preaching in Mlolonga and they came to me and the lady talked to me crying and said prophet i'm an orphan our father left some money our mother died then our father also died and our father left some money and when we followed up the money the last point the account was empty and the man was helping us told us that there was no money in the account and he told us to go I've come you pray for me so that my father's money can go back into the account trust me do you think I am so evil that I can turn that one to a prophecy do you think I'm so stupid that I can pray over that who doesn't know there is no money that disappears in account unless someone will do it and as I felt the pain of this story the spirit of the lord told me the man who sent them away is the man who withdrew the money where do this kind of oppression what kind of oppression is this and where can such kind of hopeless people in life go to and i asked the girl did you take the matter to chief yes what happened when i went to chief sorry to say but she told me prophet chief slept with me and chief told me that he will assist me from there which he never did again look 
These are cases that can only be brought to the men of God and the women of God. But that is exactly what people are going through. What do you think God will do to such a nation? What do you think God can do to such a nation? Where orphans are being oppressed and not only being oppressed but also humiliated by the systems of law. And today where will you take them? To court? Today you, so many places in government system in Kenya, you take your problem, make sure your pocket is loaded. It's either you have money to give or you have a pant to offload. If you are a lady and if you are a man, it's about your money. If you have nothing to sell, nothing to offer, you're already on the wrong side. This is the kind of a nation that we have that God is seeing today. This is the kind of oppression that is standing in the eyes of God when the name Kenya is mentioned before God. But the church is total silent. The church, it is busy at the gates of the state house. One thing we don't understand, it's always at the state house. We don't know whether it's there to discuss politics or to discuss the mind of God. So let this message reach every Kenyan that there is a demon that is oppressing and crushing Kenyans financially and every believer should arise and pray over it. There is a total spiritual cry, financial war. And if the church will not wake up and pray, if the church will not wake up and intercede, if the church will not wake up and seek the face of God, I will leave you with one thing. Jesus said, be careful. They will come in a sheep's skin, but inside they are wolves. I don't think if that message is far from Kenyans, we have it. It's with us. That message is with us. Sometimes we encounter people and what they share with us breaks us and takes away even the little strength that we have. You feel the pain but you have nothing you can do. You feel the anger of God but who will even listen to you? Because those who are evil are called good and those who are good they are called evil. We are living in a society, a country that is rotten. It doesn't care how you got what you got. As long as you have it, they will clap for you. They will honor you. We are living in a society where those who have are getting more. And those who don't have, even what they thought that was theirs, it was just a dream. But we have nothing we can say. Only to remind you that no matter how you oppress the widows and the orphans, your days are numbered. No matter how you steal and invest for yourself, no matter how you will clothe yourself with billions and trillions, one day you shall go into a grave. Your soul will suffer for eternity. Because out of your greediness, you made someone to sleep hungry. You made someone to suffer. Because you did, not you did not only take what is yours, but you took away what was yours and plus theirs. And God will ask you only a simple question. Why? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you make my people to suffer? Why did you make orphans to suffer? Why did you make widows and widowers to suffer? Why did you make the old aged people to suffer? An old man who has no children in this country is as good 
as a dead man. God will deal with you. God I have a message to Mr. Thief and Mrs. Thief. Keep on stealing. Steal as much as you can steal from Kenyans. I have a message to you, Mr. and Mrs. Corrupter. Keep on corrupting. Keep on your corruption. God says, enlarge your stomach. Steal more. God says, enlarge your belly. Take more from them. But God says, prepare for my day. Because my day is eternity. My anger on you shall be eternity. My war with you shall be eternity. You cannot oppress my people for eternity. You will, appro you will oppress them for a time. Mr. President, before you became a president, there was another president. Before you became a president, there was another president. Before you became a president, there was another president. Mr. Minister, before you became a minister, there was a minister before you. And that minister before him, there was another minister. And before that minister, there was another minister. Mr. P.S., you may think you have power today, but hear the word of God. Before you became a P.S., there was a P.S. before you. And before him, there was another one. And before that, there was another one. But remember, whoever oppressed my people was never for eternity. Even yours shall not be for eternity. You can oppress the people of God, but it's not for eternity. You can take away their food, but it shall not be eternity. You can take away their rights, but it shall not be eternity. You can take away their resources, but it shall not be eternity. But what God has against you is eternity. Choices are yours. But because you will not listen, we are not telling you to change. We are just telling you to know. In fact, you know we are just reminding you. Because you decided to bend your heart and you cannot repent. You cannot repent. You cannot hear anything. But God says, no problem. Enlarge your stomach. Enlarge your intestine. Enlarge them. God says, make them big. But one thing you should know. It shall not, and it is not, and it will never be an eternity. But whatever he has against you is eternity. So, when it comes to issues of finances, I will urge every Kenyan to get into prayer and intercede and pray because this country, we are operating under a spirit of financial slavery, financial strains. And let me pray with somebody who is undergoing financial challenges right now. Let me pray with you. My Heavenly Father, I want to thank you and bless you and honor your name. Because indeed, God, you are so good. There was no money in the wilderness of Israelites, but you fed them. Lord God, as much as they disobeyed you again and again and again, but you still provided to them all those seasons. You know what Kenyans are going through. You know the types and the kinds of spirits that have been arose. The spirit that has been risen over us and against us in this country. Father, our tables are dry. Our baskets of flour are empty. Our pockets at all. Our children can't go to school. But we are turning back to you. You know us from the beginning. You know us. As you took care of Elijah, we are just asking for the same miracle. That you take care of us financially. Lord Jesus, send us that fish that you sent to Peter. Father, this is the season we need that fish. 
so that out of its mouth we may be able to get what we can pay our taxes for. You told Peter to take what he will get from the fish and come and pay the tax for the word of God, which is the bread of life. And our Lord, we are not asking only for spiritual bread, but in this country, we are even asking for the physical bread. Because the real people, the real people are dying and suffering of hunger. The real people are dying. Many have become homeless. Many are struggling. But you are the only one, the only one who can save us. May you send an angel to save us. And may you send an angel to provide to your people financially. In Jesus' name, amen. May God see you through your financial needs because he's a good God in the name of Jesus Christ.